here's Johnny. All right, so I'm on Instagram on this one. I'm on Facebook on this one. Ladies and ugly men, my grandest of apologies. Um, I'm trying to do this simulcast thing. So if you see me looking all the ways, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm missing one and not looking at the other. I will focus mainly on the Facebook camera though. So if you're watching now, understand it's nothing personal. It's just that's where I gear my stuff in order to record and save it. Um, yeah, so this session, I decided, anybody who's been watching on, I know Instagram is kind of like, what in the fuck is this? <laughs> but anybody watching on Facebook the past seven sessions, six sessions, this is session seven. This is uh, my last 92. Um, what I originally had planned was obviously the whole landscape view for you guys watching, but that didn't work out because Facebook changed the metrics. Um, but again, simulcast, anybody, hey, look at that. Look at Aubrey and Wendy up in this bitch. You guys clicked my mistake now, didn't you? <laughs> um, so don't mind the fact that I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking up at the other camera. Facebook, what up? Let's get it popping. Let's get back into it. Session seven, first and foremost. Um, I know y'all RIP and um, Stan Lee and all that stuff. You know, just do it's true. Uh, but this is the five year anniversary of Papa Andres passing. Um, a very, a very trying year for me was 2013 and that was kind of like the, the turn at the end and whatnot but luckily by that time I was already on my spiritual growth path I would guess I was back on it because October 27 2013 at 5 19 a.m was when I got on that end um just a moment of silence Um, yeah, so that is also part of what's going to tie into this session, session seven. We're going into bring the pain. This is all about the three steps as to what pain does and why it is around, why we need it. And before that, I'm going to jump into the fact that I was at a Tony Robbins event this weekend. I sipped the Kool-Aid. I used to talk so much shit about Tony and my whole perspective changed this weekend. I was put on, like, you hear my voice, it's not my normal voice, I am, you know, my voice, my throat is sore, because you spend literally, it's called Unleash the Power Within, you spend literally four days just at the top peak position, just fucking going nuts, going into a beautiful state, and all that other good shit, because physiology ties into the mental and emotional aspect. The past six sessions were all about mental and emotional, yes, pain has to deal with mental and emotional, and I promised you last week that I would return and we would jump right into the physical uh, peace pillar of the whole program. But after this weekend, I realized I never really touched on pain and the purpose of pain and the use of pain and why we need pain to progress and to move forward and to elevate. Um, I'm back on my whiteboard, as y'all can see. The shoulder's feeling better. Um, we will, uh, you know, I, I would, I would attribute some of the healing to all the power and the energy that was at the uh, unleash the power within. But I think it's just my natural fucking body taking care of itself, and the fact that I'm drinking uh, with that, a bunch of shit, man. I'm doing the whole fish oil stuff, collagen. I'm just all up in the mix, man. Let me tell you something. I gotta repair. I can't be like this. Um, but I am able to once again. Reach my whiteboard. Yeah. So let's do that. Got the purple pen out. And as always, I do have notes. Not very detailed notes, as I learned also this weekend through a testing process that I am not one for detailed notes. I am not one for structure. I am... I mean, I kind of knew this always. And anybody that does know me, I kind of go off the cuff. Just give me a subject, and I, that's why I like to internalize and learn so much, have so much knowledge in my head, so I do not have to structure anything. I'm just going all for the heart, like all for my mind. It's bam, 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 bam. That's what we do with the podcast. Anybody that's not subscribed, get your ass to purplecupsandchampagne.com. That's P-U-R-P-L-E-S-C-U-P-S, -S -S, whatever, xchampagne.com. It's an X, not an and. I know everybody has a problem with that. Um... So yeah, with the podcast, like I was saying, probably I fucking got off track. Um, it's that. I don't go into the podcast necessarily knowing topics or whatnot. I put Chetty in charge of that and Joshi, and they come up with topics, all the structure. I'm all about, fuck it, let's get on the mic, let's rock and roll, roll and rock, do my thing. It's where I shine the best. Um, and I even like getting surprised by questions and whatnot. It's just, it's my nature, so... 
It's one thing I learned this weekend, so it's pretty cool. But this is a little structured. So let's jump into this. Because pain is what we love to avoid. But does anyone know what happens with unprocessed pain? I do. I do. <laughs> well, let me pick on myself. It turns into shit. Unprocessed pain turns into depression, turns into drug addiction, turns into adultery. It just turns into a whole mess of shit. And what you end up doing is hurting other people out of your own pain. But we avoid pain because dealing with it is not as fun, right? Hence why we numb it. Hence why we, we fall victim to drugs, fall victim to alcohol. I'm included in that shit, man. Let me tell you something, man. I am not above any of this. Um, I've learned to control it, thank God. Um, but I still, I still have the nature of it. The tendencies are still there. I just hold back and know not to really ah, let myself go deep in or go all in. Pause. Um, and it's very important to understand that, man. Like how we, the, how we handle pain really, really does and always will determine everything. It determines every outcome in life. Um, it, it's and the pain is the the wake up. It's 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 often what we avoid, like. Hence, uh, one of my old mentors, his main shit was always, yo, pain now, pain now, pain now. That was his thing. Like, you know why? The longer you wait to address a pain issue, the worse it gets because you start to adapting and thinking that that pain, that pain is your norm. And that's not your norm. You will never, ever flourish out of that. No one, no one, nobody. Uh, anybody on Instagram, by the way, just so you know, I'm recording on Facebook. So if you think like, yo, this guy's an idiot. He ain't even looking at the camera. I know where the fucking camera is. If there's anything I know is where the camera is. Um, but yeah, back into that, you know. Um, it's just detaching from truth. Like anybody that, if you if you avoid pain, you're detaching from truth. Because what pain, and I'm going to speak on that in the three steps. That's why my trusty whiteboard. Um, what pain does, it, it leads you down a path. It's not just pain to be painful. Pain is, is a director. Pain is something that uh, awakens you. Pain is something that sets you straight. It lets you know something is off. Right? Um, I can read my notes here. Oh, man. This is pretty cool. Mm. Um, we often look at, at like, we often look at pain and, and feel in a way that it is a punishment. And that's why it is necessary to start changing your mindset, start reframing, start understanding that. Is it a punishment or is it a gift? Right? Like, if you didn't know that being highly obese can slow you down and possibly cause a heart attack, you just stuff your face to death until you're like 600 something pounds. But you wouldn't feel pain prior to that to know until the heart attack hits. But you do feel the pain of slowing down, the pain of not being able to, you know, be attractive, the pain of not being able to have a good time with your kids, the pain of not being able to fit in certain clothes and look a certain way. That's your wake up call. That's your, yo, I am, I'm, I'm out of whack. I'm definitely not on the path that I need to be on. So pain is way more than just a punishment. If you sit there and always look at pain as a punishment, you're definitely not equipped to be a winner. And as you've seen these past six sessions, I, I, I so focus on being a winner because I, I think it's the only way. Uh, you're either winning or losing. There truly is no other option. There's no in between. Um, it's, it's not like you're failing in passing because you either pass and move on to the next level or you quote unquote fail and you learn something that can help you be even better at the next level. Right. But there is a winner or a loss. If if that if you if you fail, quote unquote, fail by the standards that you're being set in. Right. And you don't move on from there. Going to, you lost. You L.O.S.T. lost. There's no way around it. Now, if you failed at that moment and use that to catapult you on the next level, you are winning. So winning should always be the only option, baby. Hard winners. You know what it is. I talk that shit because I live that shit and I love that shit. And I've lost a lot. I'm not going to lie. Um, all right. So what happens is a lot of times, if left unmanaged, we, we all tend to dip into self-pity. Again, I spoke earlier, depression. And, and even so, pain unmanaged a lot of times has manifested itself in death. Right? People say, oh, he, he killed himself you know, because he was depressed. Now, why was he depressed? Because he had a pain that he never attended to. And that pain got so excruciating because it was not dealt with at a prior time or maybe in time, 
And not for every case either. I'm not going to be that insensitive. But the truth is, if that pain wasn't dealt with when it was just this big pain, and it was let's get to this big pain, that's unbearable for most individuals. Most people, you know, you're done. There's no, there's no other level after that except, you know, if it, that's why it's also important, and that's part of the pain sermon, quote-unquote, um, to have that relationship with God, to have that relationship with the universe, with a higher being, whatever you may call it. I know it's not a fancy word for everybody. I call it God. You call it anything else, it's up to you. But it is essential to have that kind of faith because at those moments where the pain does become so, so unbearable, if we just listen, if we stop, if we see where it's leading, where it's leading from, not leading to, but where it's leading from, where is it coming from, you can better attack it. You can seek help. You can seek assistance because that is one of the parts of pain. I think pain is a channel to fellowship. I think it's what God wanted out of all of us is for everyone to really intertwine. Like I said in the last call, God ain't going to fucking come and tap your shoulder and be like, Hey, what's up, Johnny, man? Hey, listen, I know you're going through some shit. Let me tell you what to do real quick. Have fun. Wait on it. No, but he generally uses people or song or voices in your head. Like in, 2000, in 2013, when I had that whole downfall and shit, when I had that awakening at 5.19 a.m. on October 27th, it was the voice of Kendrick Lamar in my head, right? Saying, now hop in the water and pray that it works. You're dying of thirst. You're dying of thirst. That was my wake-up call. Was that God? I, I would like to think so, right? But he didn't speak to me directly. He used a channel that would better work for me. And that happens all the time in life. Hence why the pain was so unbearable for me that year. That year was fucking fucked up, man. That year was full of heartbreak, full of suicide and family members, so death, um, just pain, man, all around. 2013 was a fucked up year, but it did lead to growth, necessary growth that I needed. So... I, you know, at the time, I, I, it wasn't easy to understand it. Looking back, obviously, it was. And it's what's led to me understanding when pain comes now, I feel that like I'm a fucking human being. So when that is happening at that moment, I'm not like, ha, look at this lesson. All right, all right. What are we trying to figure out here, Jesus? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm literally like, oh, wow, life is over. And then about 11 seconds later, I'm like, yo, shut up, dude. You know who you is? You guys favor this, man. How dare you? Um, let's see, let's see. I invite pain when you steer off the road. Sorry if I'm not as ready as I usually am. Like I said, I like information and then digesting it. I had to really write this up quick because this was not my intention from jump. I was just really, really inspired off of the Tony Robbins weekend and whatnot to just get it in. I had a lot of doctors with me so that I was all over the fucking place. So I didn't have time and I literally just <laughs> Like that, that quick. All right, so what people don't understand is either this is I I looked at my notes and I forgot to say this. What use would it be to not have pain in our lives? Like, what do you get from not experiencing pain? Right? We're not robots. Like God gave us free will for a reason. We were invited to feel certain pains. Right. So that we knew that he existed and we saw him. Now, free will, the choice to make a wrong or a right choice or a fun or a not fun choice is there. There has to be a consequence. There's consequences to everything. That's just scientific. You understand? There's nothing. There's no action without a reaction. Why would it be any different on the spiritual realm? You know? Why do people don't question that? That's, that's the question I usually have. Now... Let's do this. This is going to be a lot easier to remember. That's why I'm writing on the whiteboard so you can understand this. This is the fun part of everything. Um, the three steps, like the three indicators of what pain is trying to do, right? The levels of pain. Number one. Sorry, if you see me like tucking and going like this, the shoulder shit is pain in the ass. So I got to literally like go up here. Wake us up. That's the first level. So that's where pain really gets into what it's 
doing. So, perfect example. A child doesn't know anything about borders, boundaries, none of that shit. When they start walking, they just... Whew! But what happens as soon as they walk? They run into things. They fall. They learn that gravity exists. They feel the pain of their ass hitting the floor. That's a wake-up call. That says, hey, man, you might not want to fall again. You might want to get this walking shit down packed. Now, if they don't have that pain when they fall, what need would they have to keep walking? You understand? Like what, what would push them to walk and try to do it so much better? Not much. So that's where, that, again, that pain comes in. Um, a child learns that, hey, these walls can hurt you. This is a wall. We're not just, we don't exist in some fucking realm where nothing is anything and we can just do what we want. So you need the pain of going through a wall. You need the pain of, if you start fucking, I don't know, throwing bananas all over the place and breaking shit, mommy's going to come and smack you in the ass. Like she's going to pow. Hey buddy, you don't do that. You know, that's going to be the way you learn what rules are, what happens. And so, I'm going to write them down first. Make us up. Bing, 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 bing. And three, take us up. I'll fully explain these in a second. So, back to the waking us up. This is where it is uber important for you to understand that pain is for you and not against you, right? So let's, I'll give you a, a perfect example with myself. So when I had my accident, my shoulder was fucked up. It was hurting. It was in pain. My knee was back. All this good shit, right? I went to doctors who are experts and they said, hey, don't worry. We're going to put you in physical therapy and we're going to work them kinks out in your shoulder, guy. You'll be 100% in no time. Fast forward three fucking months of physical therapy left and right. I'm still feeling pain. I'm still in pain. So that was my wake up call. Like, hey, if these professionals are still doing this physical therapy stuff, then why am I still in pain? Like, why am I still experiencing pain? Bam. Now I had to question even more. That gave me initiative to be like, hey, doc, man. I keep coming back and forth and these people are putting me through PT, but nothing's being therapeutically fixed, right? Let's take it to the next step. Can we get an MRI up in this bitch? And even that took a step. That was like pushing them to like do it. Like, oh, you know, let's just keep going on. I'm like, y'all, I'm in pain, man. I don't got time for this shit. MRI, bang, shows I have a torn labrum and uh, I think it was a tear in the rotator cuff. Some show my rotator cuff. Had I not had that pain that woke me up to, yo, these doctors are not really going to the level they should, I'd be screwed. I'd be here going to physical therapy for 22,000 years and wouldn't have gotten my surgery two or three weeks ago. You understand? That was the wake-up call. Pain is the wake-up call when, when you're just hanging out and you're going out with your friends and you realize like something is missing. You feel the pain of loneliness. Because you guys are going out, spending your time at the club. You're probably like sleeping with mad dudes, taking down sausages left and right. Like, ah, right? Now, you're not fulfilled. That pain of unfulfillment, that pain of loneliness, that pain of not having connection is your wake-up call. And this is where the next step comes as to what pain does. Wakes us up, makes us up. Right? Make us up. Wake us up, make us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made this tonight, so don't think you're cooler than me. I made this shit up on the fucking level. Um, anyway, make us up. And what I mean by make us up is it'll strengthen you. It'll enhance you. Pain is then telling you, all right, what can I do to fix this? Because you're out of alignment. If you're going out every fucking Friday night and you feel lonely and it's not working and these drinks ain't doing the thing, you're out of alignment with your purpose, with your walk in life, your path. So if you're out of alignment, how far ahead are you planning on getting? You can't. Now, this is where pain makes you up. Pain is going to strengthen you. It's going to wisen you up. Like, all right, so what do I do about this pain at this moment? How can I handle this pain? 
I've been going through it enough. It's obviously not going away. These drinks, these night outs, they're not doing shit for me. What can I do? That could lead you down the path of maybe, I don't know, going to online dating and actually putting your true answers, your true self out there. Not this, you know, mad, mad maniac that goes out every Friday, gets fucking shit phased, and you're like, oh my God, I love you, Juan Carlos. You're like the best salsa dancer in history. I want to just touch your balls. Like, that's your wake up call. Because now you're on Match.com, you're completely sober, you're being you, you're showing your true attributes, what it is that makes you you. And now, and now, the person that seeks you or gets to try and know you is more interested in who you are, not who you're portraying. That's another thing about us as human beings. We're so ego-driven, right? We're so trying to keep up, trying to do this and that. And eventually, the facade that we put up will catch up. Eventually, the pain gets so tough of, of actually keeping up this character that we built that it's no longer, no longer, you're out of alignment. God is telling you like, yo, this ain't working, baby. You better start switching the game up. Ugh, drinking water now. I don't have the fancy one, little Tony Robbins weekend. I think I'm a fucking super duper man. So it makes us up, it strengthens us. Um, bang. Another example. Sorry, I love examples. They just make things a lot easier to understand. I was saying earlier about the fat dude that's just eating, eating constantly, out of shape, and he starts to feel the pain of longing to pain and not breathing, and boom, he gets a heart attack. He gets a heart attack, but guess what? This one didn't take him. This one did not take him out. Now it's time to strengthen himself. Now he's like, yo, you know what? I can't die, man. My kids need me. I'm not, I gotta see little Dolly walk down the fucking aisle. I'm not gonna be that guy. I don't wanna walk with her in the aisle and not have to like push her into every pew every time we walk past. Ugh, 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 look at Dolly's dad. You know what I'm saying? That pain of that idea of not being able to be with her, your own kid, walking her down the aisle and fitting, that gets you to start eating better. Start going to work out. You hire a personal trainer. You start to strengthen yourself. You strengthen your diet. You strengthen your body. You strengthen your heart. You go and you start to do all these little things thanks to that pain of knowing I almost missed my daughter's life. That was the wake-up call. And last but not least, the fun part of it all, this is where I think pain matters the most. Damn, I I skip mad shit. Yo, you know what, though? That's why I like doing what I do. That's what it is, man. Listen, man. Pain and truth are your best friend. I, you know, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. They both lead into the other. They both lead to you. But um, take us up. Now, what I mean by that? I, this is my opinion, my view, my session. So if you don't feel that way, it's cool. It's awesome. But even if you're not a believer in God, right? Even if you say, yo, I don't believe in God, the fucking universe, Johnny, we just exist out of atoms. <laughs> Big bang, right? Even if that's your true feeling, something inside will tell you we were meant to be with people. As much as we like to fake, like I'm the, I'm, yo, I was the number one dude over there. Like, I don't need anybody. I'm good by myself, so I'm a survivor. All these, what were truths to me, were, were false. I, I'm a naturally social human being. As much as I like my solitude, don't get it twisted, I need my time alone. I'm Pisces, how we work. I, I love being around people. I feed off energy. Before this whole energy movement and da 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 da, all this crazy talk, I've always known I feed off that. I love socializing. I love being around people. I love helping people. I love contributing. I wouldn't be doing this shit. Like, I barely get any views. I barely get any feedback. And I still do it because I love humanity. As much as I fight with it and get angry at it, and anybody that knows me knows I am fucking tough on people, especially my loved ones. But I love humanity. It drives me. So I feel, when I say takes us up, wakes us up, there's a pain. Makes us up. Helps us strengthen, fix the pain, get ready for the next level. Takes us up. Bang, boogie. This is where you want to go. Take us up. Heaven. But heaven on earth. I feel God wants fellowship out of everyone. I mean, anyone that's driven, written a Purpose Driven Life, I know I got it right here somewhere. By the way, I'm starting a group specifically for the last 40 days of the year. 
just for the purpose driven life book. There's 10,000 people that have done the same shit. Hardy, hard, yippity, daddy, do that. Guess what? I want to do it for myself, my loved ones, anybody that's winning and happy to join. Bang, purpose driven life. If you read this book, you get out of it that main concept that God wants fellowship out of us. God doesn't want you to be alone. So you're going through this pain, whatever. Bang, you need to hit the gym. What are you going to do? You need to find the nutritionist, right? Because you don't, you're fucking 612 pounds. What do you know about nutrition? Now you need a personal trainer. You haven't stepped the foot in the gym since you were in fucking eighth grade and it was forced on you, right? Because even in high school, you got some crazy letter that said you didn't have to participate, right? You now need the assistance of a personal trainer. Now you're in the gym. You're around other people. You start talking. You start mingling. You get out of your shit. You start to really live again because now you're realizing no one is here by themselves. We're all connected no matter how you see it. God didn't throw out all these flavors and varieties for you to be a fuckface stuck at home watching Netflix playing fucking Fortnite. It's not how life works. It wasn't intended for that way. I got to tell myself that a lot of times. I'm very much a loner. It's, it's in my nature. Like, I prefer to do things alone. I like to. Like, this weekend when I had the, the Tony Robbins event. Audrey gave me the ticket. Her brother was going. He's hitting me up. Like, Yo, what's up, man? I'm going to be here. My wife. Da, 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 da. I didn't want that. Johnny wanted to be dolo. I wanted to just be me by myself. That is how I am. I wanted to, to feel it, really go through it, really have no type of um, like barrier in a way of friendship and knowing people. And I ended up meeting cool people, actually. And, and me and this kid, Alex, we became real close friends that night. You know what I'm saying? Like, he stayed with me throughout the whole thing. Like, it, it happened. But when it was happening, I was fighting it. I'm like, damn, I really want to do this shit by myself. Uh, I want to experience this. Um, I wonder what they're going to do next. Maybe uh, when we come back tomorrow, we won't meet up. And Alex was like, fuck this. Your man texts me in the morning like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, it's me, Alex. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, what's up? Where you at? I'm like, yo, back in the same place. I saved him a seat and do this cool as shit. I developed a new relationship out of that. Somebody that I looked to like, damn, this kid, 27 years old, really got his head on his shoulders. Bang, anything that I know I can impart on him. I don't know if he's on this call. He told me he would be. Hopefully he is. You know, this is what we do. We give. So that is it. That is the third step you get from pain. That is the third one. If you don't believe me, watch me while I'm doing my podcast. That is probably the most alive you will see me. You see me alive on these videos anytime I'm engaging with others. And we're not even in, in contact, right? There's no one here. Like, when we were at that Tony Robbins event, I cheated. You know why I cheated? When everybody's doing their visualization and shit, and he's like, picture yourself five years from now. I can't do the Tony Robbins voice. Where are you right now? No, 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 all that shit. And I'm cheating because when everybody's cheering, I'm literally on his stage. That is my place. I am on stage. I am doing the same thing he's doing, imparting peace on people, just helping people, loving on people. I'm doing that. And I'm just like, in the fucking vision board. You got a vision board at home. These people are in the vision they had. I'm sitting there in the vision board. I'm literally with fucking 12,000 people just cheering, cheering, cheering. Yeah, yeah. And all I'm seeing with my eyes closed is me on that stage while he's talking. I'm seeing myself on that stage. I'm in the vision board, but I'm feeding off of others because that is the main purpose of pain. If you really feel like you came to this earth and you're just going to be chilling by yourself, Doing what you want. That's called pride. That's called ego. It's not going to happen. Eventually, eventually, pain will set in. Pain, the best friend of truth, will set in so that you can seek truth. And that's what's going to happen. I feel like I covered everything. Everything's done tonight. Finishing a little early. I know I usually do these 50 minutes, 60 minutes. You know what I'm saying? But uh, really had a good one, man. And, and, I, and I say it again, man. God really just wants us to love on one another, man. Like, he really does. You know, he wants you to help your fellow man. Accept all the beauty that he created in variety. And I'm a dick. Like, don't, don't think that I'm over here talking all this cool, influential shit. And I'm just walking around loving on everybody. If anybody cracks on people and makes crazy-ass jokes all the time, it's me. But it's never, never, never with evil intention. I'm not the type of person to be like... Look at this motherfucker da, 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 in, in a malicious way. It's just, I have fun. That's my nature. God made me that way. I enjoy myself. I enjoy humor. I'm a good looking dude. And, and again, I talk well. I got, got a good head on my shoulders. All good shit. But again, man, I'm going to leave you with that. 
Learn how to process pain. Learn how to process pain. If you do not learn how to process pain, you are going to screw yourself over big time. It's You see it in, in family members. You see it in friends that are just always miserable, always negative, always just speaking in terms that you're just like, who is this? What is going on here? Right? You're just confused out of your mind. Why is this happening? And that is because they have an unresolved past. There's unprocessed pain in that mix. If you need therapy, go get therapy. If you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. Let your guard down. Let it go. It's not serving you. It's not serving others. And it will never, ever serve anyone. Trust me on that one. Like, Johnny, you're not an expert. What the heck do you know? You're barely in your 30s. Like, well, what are you going to tell me about life? I'm going to tell you everything in that aspect. You know why? Well, I'm connected to the universal intelligence. All right? God, God, the ruler of all this shit, you know, has bestowed on me a gift. And I love it. And, and I admire it. And I never take it for granted. I'm very grateful for it. Um, and it, it actually hurts me when others don't see that gift. And others attack my character without knowing me personally one-on-one, -on -one, right? Because I care. So I'll say that I don't care. So trust me, I do. I do say I don't care sometimes. But there are times where I wonder, like, what would make you feel this way? So understand, it's that they're dealing with unprocessed pain. Any pain you're facing, anything you're going through, talk it out. Find somebody. Find somebody to get it off your chest. And hopefully, like I said in the last call, it's, it's somebody, you know, that's qualified. I would definitely seek real professional help prior to anything else. Um, but if you don't want to go that step, there's Talkspace apps, there's message boards, there's a bunch of shit out there. Don't let people with unprocessed pain bring you down. Don't let people with unprocessed pain make you not process yours. The quicker we all start processing our pain, the better. Pain is just that wake-up call. Let me tell you, this life is short. Short. On average, I think we're here like 70-something years. Now we're like medicine and say, I'm going to live to at least 142. I'm sure of it. But for the most part, the average human being is only going to live. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, you get 80 years. This shit's over in a blink. So it would behoove you to say, maybe this is not my last stop. Maybe I should not be so attached to all these material things. Maybe I should not be so attached to the opinions of others. Maybe I should seek joy, happiness, real fulfillment, as long as it's not impeding on anybody else's happiness and true happiness. Because just because somebody is angry at something because you feel a certain way about something, you're happy about something, doesn't always mean that they are right. Again, they could be speaking from a place of, of unresolved pasts, you know, a place of pain. So do yourself that favor. Realize this is over in a blink. This is not your home. This is not your home. You too, Instagram. This, this is home. Up there. So God bless you all. Look at that. I mean, I'm talking like a preacher up here and shit. Oh, <laughs> God bless you all. Have a lovely week. I'll be back next Tuesday. I switched times to Tuesdays now. It's just a lot easier on my schedule. Um, oh, no. It's next Tuesday's Friendsgiving. I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know by the weekend. Most likely then I'll have to do it Monday. Uh, it's a beautiful experience. Instagram, thank you for joining me this week. I figured let me try this. You know, I'm always on Facebook, and I don't have that much traction on Facebook. Not even my Instagram has that much traction. And Penelope's Instagram is my old one, so it has all my stuff there. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that. If in need of more information, just fucking DM me, just message me. If you have my number, text me, email me, um, go to hardwinners.com. I still got the same form for the last 92 for the Facebook group, whatever be who, whatever, whatever be who you, whatever be, whatever you need like that. Sorry, man. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling it now. I feel really good. I probably could do another call, but that's how I know I got to tone it down because now I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. I'm really getting tied into it. Um, and I don't want to veer off of the pain subject. So please uh, have a great night. I love you all.
Stay focused, never hopeless. All that good shit, stay favored. You know what it is. The flies do doing. I love you all. Yeah.